Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy hump day. Hello, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone's staying warm. It's feeling a little chilly these last few days. At least here in the house, very cold. I um, hope everything's going well, guys, with your classes. Uh, just a reminder, if you guys need extra assistance, feel free to reach out to your teachers. Of course, I will be happy to schedule time if you need some some help. Uh, but make sure that you're seeking the help that you need if you are falling behind. Um, in our class this week, now let me share my screen. I want to do two things. I want to start uh, with a debate. This week, I want to focus on doing a debate on Friday, and I want to spend time today and tomorrow to prepare for that debate. But before we do that, I want to spend a few minutes uh, looking at the ePortfolios, giving you some general feedback. I know we just started yesterday with the ePortfolios, but I want to give you just a little bit of group feedback based on what we have so far. So I'm going to share my screen. And this morning I added your names with a bookmark to each of your ePortfolios. If you don't see your name here and you added your name up at the top, let me know. At the top here you were to add your link um, as a comment. Okay, so make sure that you've added your uh, link to your ePortfolio, making sure that it's a public link. All right, so not to be confused with a link from your dashboard, from internal, in from uh, internally. Uh, you you don't want to use that URL. There's a public link for for everyone to access your ePortfolio, and that is the URL that I'm asking the asking you that you uh, share here. So here we have a list so far of the ePortfolios. And let's just jump in to one of these. Now, uh, Monica's got a really good start because I like how she has already uploaded some artifacts. So remember that for this assignment, for this week, I'm going to ask everyone to upload at least two artifacts. And... I would like for these art artifacts to be from other classes. Okay, it can be from any. It can be from any one class. It can be from writing, for example. It can be two artifacts from writing, or it can be uh, one artifact from one class and one artifact from another class. But I would also like that you upload an audio or video of a reflection about your experience with that artifact. So I think we talked about this yesterday, but just to review, um, you might think of some questions like, what did you find challenging when you completed this task or this product? Was it difficult for you? Was it, uh, what did you get out of it? What did you learn from it? What was, um, what did you like about it? Why did you choose this particular artifact? Um, how might this help you? It might even be about some questions that you still have about some aspect of your English development. But these are some ideas, some examples of questions that you can talk about. And when you're talking about anything and you're thinking, well, what can I say about this, this one thing? Think of the question words. Okay, have I said what it is? Have I said how it comes about? Have I mentioned why I like this? Have I mentioned when, right, or where, or with whom? So think of the question words to help prompt you to think about, well, how, how much or what else can I say? In this case, what else can I reflect on uh, about this artifact? All right, so uh, this is a good start. Now, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention. Yesterday we talked about the four strands in the B, in the BA. What are those four strands that we talked about yesterday? You remember? Yeah. 
can jump right in, guys. You can turn your mics on if you wish. You guys remember the the four strands. Remember we looked at a map. We looked at all the classes that you're going to take in the BA. And all of the classes are divided into categories or strands. So which do you remember the strands that we talked about yesterday? I remember I want I but I don't know how to say in English, uh, linguistic aplicada. Okay. All right. So applied linguistics. Now, what in the world does that mean? Applied linguistics? What does that mean? Hmm. Applied linguistics. Any ideas? Hmm. Anybody? I know, 8 o'clock, a question on applied linguistics. Are you crazy? Yeah, so <laughs> applied linguistics, my friends, is simply how languages are learned, right? So you have to ask yourself, what makes a good teacher? What makes a good English teacher? Well, maybe having some knowledge about how people learn an additional language, right? Because it's different than learning it as a baby, right, as your L1, as your native tongue, it's different, right? So it might be useful as to be an English teacher to have some idea about what the experts say about how people learn additional languages, all right? So applied linguistics is one strand. What's another strand in the BA? You remember another strand, another type of category of courses that you're going to be taking? Well, I remember phonetics and phonology. Okay, so phonetics and phonology, that's actually a, a specific course, right? And that uh, probably would fall under the applied linguistics uh, uh, strand, right? Phonetics and... Uh, psycholinguistics, social linguistics, discourse analysis, applied linguistics. There were three other strands that we talked about. Think about like, well, what does what does it take to be a good English teacher, right? So applied linguistics, some sort of knowledge of that. What else would you need to have to be a good teacher? And we talked about a three. Uh, go ahead. We also have to uh, to know how to speak in public. Okay, so that to speak in public falls under right falls under the skills development strand. We call this the skills development strand. So we want to make sure you guys uh, improve your speaking skills, your public speaking skills, your writing skills, your reading skills. Right, because we think that to be a good teacher, you need, and I should say, to be a good English teacher, you need to be proficient in the language, in this case, English. Right, so that's another strand the skills development, and that includes public speaking and writing, academic writing, poetry, being able to write poetry, business correspondence. Right, those are the types of writings that you're going to be. Uh, working on throughout the BA. All right, so we've got applied linguistics, we've got skills development. What are the last two strands of the BA? What do you think? Think about... Go ahead. Anybody have any other ideas? There are two other strands or types of classes that you're going to take, and this is important for being a good English teacher. 
Any ideas? How about teaching methodology? All right, so pedagogy, right? To be a good teacher, you need to have some, uh, some knowledge about techniques, teaching techniques, right? You need to know something about material development, how to prepare uh, materials for English language learners, right? And you need to know methods and approaches and theories if this is all important, some a knowledge of this is going to help you be a better teacher. And this is the third strand that we talked about yesterday. And these are a category of classes that you're going to that you're going to take. The last one, and probably maybe some would say the most important, the practicum. The actual practice. It's like from the very first semester of the BA. Right? You, you need to be in the classroom. You need to be observing. You need to be doing the teaching. You need to be practicing. You need to be out there teaching in front of students and getting experience in being a teacher. All right? So those are the four strands. Again, applied linguistics. Number two, skill development. Number three, teaching methodology, and number four, the practicum, the teaching practice. We call this in English the practicum. And so why do I bring this up? Because when you're thinking about your e-portfolio, right, you're thinking about your e-portfolio and how you can organize your e-portfolio, many of the templates that you have chosen already have a menu. If you look in this example on the left hand side of your screen, there are different ways to access different pages. This is a navigational menu here. And this, the way that you navigate, you could decide, you know what, I'm going to have here instead of history, I'm going to have skill development. Instead of a keepo, I'm going to have applied linguistics. Now, I know that you don't have or haven't had probably any courses in applied linguistics. But I'm thinking in the future. I'm thinking down the road, and this is what I would like for you to do as well. Think about this is not just an assignment for the 11th week of our fall 2020 semester. Hopefully this is something that you can continue to work with and contribute to throughout your, your BA. So I don't see anything wrong with putting in your navigational window. You would have a section for skill development. You might have one for applied linguistics. Maybe you have one for teaching methodology. And maybe you have another one uh, for the practicum. Now, for our assignment for this week, what I'm asking everyone to do, you probably want to have a menu called skill development and then Within that skill development, you either have one page or probably sub pages where we can find your two artifacts and your reflection from this week. Okay, so instead of putting, let's say, the artifacts that I'm asking on the home page, right? Some of you already have really good home pages. Um, I don't recall offhand here. Uh, but some of you have a really good homepage. What's a good homepage? Well, for me, a good homepage is you, it has your name at the top and some sort of title, whether it's ePortfolio, you might even give it another title, right? And I don't even think it's necessary to call it an ePortfolio, although it is an ePortfolio. You can personalize it. So if you want to give it another fancy dancy uh, title, go for it. But I, I certainly think it should have your name and a title and some sort of visual component, right? Now, it doesn't have to have, you know, sometimes less is more. Um, but you decide this is a very personal thing. So I want you to have the flexibility in designing your own space, right? But 
I I can offer some suggestions, right? So I think that you can have a title, you can have your name, and some sort of navigational window, to, regardless of what kind of format or template that you're that you've chosen, right? So I like this is very simple but very nice, right? You've got the title, you've got the name, and probably along the top you could add some uh, a menu right where then you can add um let's say skills development and then within under the page of skill development you can add your artifacts and your audio reflections okay now i think it's a really good idea also to include some information about yourself again only share information about yourself that you feel comfortable sharing this is this is a, available to the whole world so just keep that in mind. We probably don't want to share personal information like our address. I wouldn't share my email, nor would I share um, your telephone number, okay? Now, I did notice that I think it was Jesus, if I remember right, yeah. Uh, Jesus, I would suggest, and there's a way to do this, we can, and if you can't figure this out, we can uh, chat after class, but my suggestion would be to go in to Wix, and you can go in to, I think, under settings, there, I think there's a way to do this. I would change or modify your 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 uh, website, your URL, URL, yeah, can't speak this morning. Um, to not include your student ID, all right, just to keep that personal, okay? Um, and I know that it probably did that by default. It probably, I don't know, but there is a way to change that. Uh, this has come up before with other students, and uh, you don't have to, I don't think you have to delete or remove or start over. I think you can go into settings and change your uh, your link, all right, so I would do that again, just to not share any personal information that you know that maybe you don't want to to share. All right, so just want to give you guys some ideas. Right, this is another very simple format, but very nice. And here along the top is where you can add your navigation, your different spaces. And also make sure that you go through, because a lot of these templates have stock images. They have images that come with the template. So you're going to want to go through and kind of remove or clean that up, right? So just include information. And, you know, I understand we're all starting uh, from the very beginning here. So I totally expect to have, you know, few images or pages and things like that. So... I would much rather you just have what's yours, what you've uploaded, and again, only stick to the images that that either you have created yourself or that you have found online through a what's called a Creative Commons license that gives you rights as long as you pay attribution, you have a link back to the original source, you can use those images with no problem. All right, so avoid just going to Google and finding an image and, and including it because probably you're not going to have rights to share it on your website. Okay, so not to have any problems there. Any images that you create, of course, that's perfectly fine to, to share. All right, any general questions about the ePortfolios? No. All right. So uh, keep working on your ePortfolios. And today what I'd like to do, and I've done this before, I'm going to share a link now for our page for our debate. This is going to be our first day preparing for a debate. And I've created a page in Notion. I copy and paste this page in the chat so that you can open this up on your computer 
Now, what I would like for you to do is to listen to the audio. The audio has the instructions that I would like for you to do today. And again, there's a reason I do this. I want to turn this into a listening activity for you is to listen to, to the instructions. I would practice taking notes. We've talked a lot about how to take notes for listening for the uh, TOEFL exam. This is another example. I think this audio is like four minutes. No, I think it's more than that. Seven minutes. Um, and you know what? If I were you, what I would try to do is I would play it start to finish without stopping it and try your best to take as many notes as possible. Think of some of the strategies of um, only including content words like nouns and verbs and adjectives, maybe abbreviating some words and by omitting the vowels. Maybe you include symbols, right, if you need to. But practice listening to these instructions and trying to write out as much as you can on a piece of paper. And, and then if you need to listen to it again, of course, listen to it again and pause it. But I would try this first time listening as trying to write out the notes. And then if you have to listen to it again, continue adding to your notes, all right? Because today you're going to work with uh, a team, a new team. So what I would try to do is go to the team meeting when you get with your other teammates have some notes, have something written down so that each of you has an idea of what, what it is you're going to do. That's what I, that's my suggestion. All right. So let's go ahead and begin. I want to give you as much time today uh, to do this task. I'm going to be in and out of your groups. And of course, I'll be here to answer questions if you have doubts. Um, but let's go ahead and begin this activity. And Make sure that I would, I would make sure that you're at this page in Notion so you can that you're all starting in the right place, and uh, we'll come back at 9:40 at the end of the class to sum up the class. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, guys, and again, just jump in if you have any questions. Okay. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Okay, teacher. All right, everyone. It's 9:40. We'll go ahead and take this time to close uh, today's class. We started off by talking about ePortfolios. If you haven't already, please share your ePortfolio in the Notion page if you haven't done so already. Make sure that you're checking the way that you're organizing your information in your ePortfolio. Please remove all extraneous information. Please remove all information that that uh, is not your information that you uploaded to your space. Okay, so if there are images, you can remove those images, you can remove text, you can remove forms. It's okay if you don't have a lot of information, if you're just getting started, that's fine. I would rather you have that than have a lot of just stock photos. Okay, so go ahead and clean that up if you have to. Also think about your navigation and how you're going to organize and put your information. Okay, so this week we need to upload two artifacts. So make sure that those artifacts go someplace in some some page uh, based on how you decided to organize your information. Uh, also today we worked on our debate. Today's our first day preparing for our debate. We're going to perform our debate this Friday. And I'm sharing my screen. All of you should have access to this calendar. And I recommend that you take a look at this calendar when you're trying to find out what we're doing for what day. But this Friday, we have a page that's called Debate. And before tomorrow, I would ask that all of you take a look at these debate rules. These are going to be the rules that we'll talk about tomorrow in class, but go ahead and just read through these first before you come to class, and uh, it might be helpful whenever we get into it uh, tomorrow. Today we divided into teams of four. So just to summarize what was discussed in the audio, 
the Teams one and two, okay, they're going to be in group one in Microsoft Teams. Team one is going to be for the use of or playing games, playing video games. Team two is going to be against. Team three is going to be for. Team four is going to be against. Team five is going to be for. Team six is going to be against. Team seven is going to be for. Team eight is going to be against. Team 9 is going to be 4. Team 10 is going to be against. All right, so tomorrow we're going to continue working on this activity. And when you guys are finding sources to support your reasons, make sure that you're including links in the shared Word document. All right, so when you prepare for a debate, this isn't what you think. This isn't how you feel. This is about what you found. Okay, if it's a video, fine. If it's Wikipedia, that's fine. Whatever the source is, you need to use an outside source to support your claim. Now, you still need to use your own words. Okay, so you're going to create, try to speak without reading word for word, but all the information, the ideas are coming from an outside source. All right, so this is gonna be what we're gonna work on tomorrow. We'll continue working on this activity. Um, just to make sure, I, I wanna throw out one option here because I noticed that some of the links were related to video games with children. Now in the audio, I mentioned specifically that we focus on adults, that is uh, individuals like 18 years of age and, and older. So I will give you an option if both teams, that is, for example, team one and two, if everyone agrees that they want to only focus on children, then I will allow you to focus only on children. Otherwise, I'm asking everyone to focus only on adults. What I don't want is that we focus both on adults and children, simply because those are two really different situations, two different uh, claims and debates, really. It's a totally different debate, I think. All right, so I will give you an option. If you want to focus only on children, and we'll say children up to, let's say, 13 or 14 years old, okay, and... Um, if everyone agrees, okay, if uh, both teams, that is team one and two agree, team three and four agree, and so on. Okay, otherwise, again, please focus only on adults. All right, are there any questions about the debate, uh, the activity that we did today for preparation for the debate on Friday? No. Okay. Uh, well, I was thinking that in how it's going to be organized, <laughs> the debate, mm -hmm. if we are uh, like a team, we're going to talk about, well, we are talking in the same time or it's going to be like, I, I said my reason and then the other team and right. then I can respond back or what? Yeah, that's a good question. And the your answer to your question is in the debate rules that i posted here for for friday so i'm going to talk about this in greater depth because we're kind of finishing the class for today but i think tomorrow would be a good time to talk specifically about the debate rules but i i would like to ask everyone to read through first the debate rules before class tomorrow and then that way, as I explain it, hope then it, I think it'll be a little bit easier to understand. Okay? So, so take a look at the debate rules on Saturday. I'm sorry, Friday, this Friday. And the page is called Debate. If you're looking at my screen, you should all be able to access the same page. And there, there's a drop-down. It's called a toggle switch. If you click on this arrow you'll see additional information for the opening statements the debate and the closing statements
All right. Okay, thank you. And and one one other thing too, I would uh, make sure remember that you're going to need four reasons per uh, per team or per argument. Okay, so um, for example, you know, team one will have four different aspects, right? And there are going to be four team members. So each team member will have one reason to support the team's claim. All right, so make sure that in your shared Word document, whether it's one document or you're, if you're separating into two documents, that's fine. But make sure that each team has uh, four reasons or one reason per person, per individual. All right, guys, tomorrow we'll continue with, uh, with this. Uh, please do check out the debate rules because I think uh, as you're preparing tomorrow, because we're going to have time in class tomorrow to continue preparing for the debate, uh, it'll, have, it'll be clear for you, I think, on how you're preparing when you know what the debate rules are. So do please take a look at that, and we'll start tomorrow in class uh, discussing those rules. All right, guys, thank you. Uh, have a great day today, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you. <clears throat> thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. -bye.